Welcome to Thrive with Nicole. I'm your host, Nicole Ivins. And this episode, I wanted to talk to you um, about the signs and symptoms of childhood anxiety. So as a highly sensitive person yourself or an empath, if that's how you identify, you most likely, if you are a parent, of course, you most likely have um, children, you know, maybe one of them, maybe a few of them that um, might suffer with anxiety or anxious symptoms. So I thought this would be a good topic to share with you. Just some guidance in how you can support your child if they do experience anxiety from time to time. All right, so I wanted to start really with the, you know, the misconceptions of of childhood anxiety and actually have an experience, a personal experience that I wanted to share with you that I think will help you to understand how there are quite a lot of misconceptions when it comes um, to childhood anxiety. So, you know, it was a few years ago now, but I had an interesting experience um, with our youngest daughter who at the time she was 13 and I was attending an award ceremony for her. And, you know, as the... The ceremony got started. Uh, it always starts with the principal's address as usual. And, you know, he talks about the achievements of the kids and, and how proud he is um, of all of them and everything that they've achieved uh, for that term. But this time he decided to do things a little bit different. Now, this was pre-COVID. So <laughs> and, you know, he started out with what he wanted to achieve. So as the principal, what he wanted to achieve. And that was a 93% attendance record. And the school was currently sitting around 87%. So, you know, in my mind, I was thinking such a big school that I think that's a pretty good record, you know, that 87% of the kids, you know, have got that good attendance. Um, And it was then that he really grabbed my attention. So he used a buzzword, anxiety, we all know it's a buzzword, and stated it as the main reason for kids not attending school. Now, I'll be honest, my ears did prick up at that stage because, you know, business brain on, (laughs) thinking, yes, I can help support parents and kids uh, with anxiety. But you know what? I certainly didn't expect what was about to come next. His solution to childhood anxiety left me feeling very dismayed. And this brings me to you know, the topic of how it's so many misconceptions about childhood anxiety. So he made a suggestion, you know, to all of the kids that all they need to do is become more organized and arrive at school early. So then they're not rushing, not rushing around. They'd be first in class and feeling safe and ready for the day. So tell me, what do you think of this approach? Would this work? For your child who suffers with anxiety? Would this work for you as a child when you are suffering with anxiety? So now you know there are definitely different types um, of childhood anxiety and I certainly understand you know what he was saying um, in regards to how kids feel when they're running late and rush to get to class on time. Like I get that, I understand that, but is that really in the child's complete control? Now, I know for my kids, you know, when they were were at school, they're adults now, but when they were at school, I'll be honest, if we were late, it was usually my fault. (laughs) It wasn't usually their fault. (laughs) So, you know, this experience really got me thinking. And I wondered how many people are there that really don't understand anxiety? And what role is it playing in your child's life? So now for me, you know, obviously as a, a professional counselor of someone who has personal experience with anxiety, I recognize it instantly. It's not something that's hard for me to recognize. But like I said, I am a trained professional counselor. And, you know, so this is what really led me to this episode and wanting to share how you can recognize anxiety in your child. So as I mentioned earlier, you know, there are different types of childhood anxiety. So for example, some of the common types that I see with my clients a separation anxiety, generalized anxiety, and situational anxiety. So separation anxiety is as the name describes and is more common in younger children, but can also be seen in older children as well, just depending you know, on what that child has experienced and what they're currently coping with. Generalized anxiety, so this is used to describe anxiety that doesn't pertain to one you know, certain event, experience, or time. 
You may have described your child as an anxious child. So they may be suffering with generalized anxiety, no real reason for it. And then we have situational anxiety, and that is used to describe anxiety that pertains to a certain event um, or experience such as tests or exams. You know, I see this both in younger and older children. For example, younger children surrounding, say, doctor or dentist visits um, and older kids with, you know, exams or tests at school. So that's how we describe that situational anxiety. So now that you have a better understanding of the different types of anxiety, let's look at some of the signs and symptoms to look for in your child. So this is, I've got a bit of a list here for you. So just hang in there with me. So the first one is complaining of stomach pains and with no other signs of illness. This is a very common one, especially in younger children. They might say, mommy, I've got a sore tummy. I don't want to go to school. Uh, sweaty palms is another one. Withdrawn behavior, not wanting to participate in activities that they would have in the past. Talking about all the bad things that may happen. That's really classic anxious behavior. Like really thinking about things or worrying about things before they've even happened. They might be crying, this is for younger children specifically, crying and hiding behind you. So that's you know a clear example of separation anxiety. So we've got not wanting to go to school and no real reason that you can determine. They might lash out at their siblings for reasons that in the past may not have bothered them. That like they might be getting triggered more easily than they have in the past. You might notice that they're feeling overwhelmed. You might notice that they're having trouble sleeping and also grades at school are lowering compared to previous reports and you're not exactly sure why. So they're just a few of the signs and symptoms that you can look for in your child to see whether you know they are experiencing anxiety for one reason um, or another. So as I said, they're just a few of the signs and symptoms that your child may exhibit uh, when they are feeling anxious. So the other thing you know, I think we need to understand is for you specifically as the parent, like I know how distressing it can be uh, dealing with anxiety in your children. Like I said, my both of my children, you know, suffered with anxiety. And, you know, my kids are grown now. They're both adult daughters. But like I said, they both suffered from anxiety when they were in their school years. And they do still suffer from that every now and then um, as adults as well. But obviously having me as their mum, <laughs> as a professional counsellor and also an EFT practitioner, they've certainly got the tools they need to help them with their with their anxiety. So that leads me to the next point. So having the tools and strategies you need as a parent can really help to lower this feeling of disempowerment because it can feel very disempowering when your child is going through that and you don't know how to help them, right? I 100% get that. And it can be a lot of distress, causing you a lot of distress. And for me, what I find when it comes to dealing with kids that have got anxiety, an individual approach is best because not all kids are the same. Their anxiety isn't going to be the same either. So for each child's anxiety, the symptoms can show up in a different way for different reasons. Same as you, you know, as an adult, your anxiety may be different from my anxiety and it may show up in different ways. It's no different for the kids. And you know what? You know your child better than anyone else. I want you to really get that you know your child better than anyone else. So starting to understand your child's symptoms and when they show up can get you started in knowing the best ways in which you can support them. So what I wanted to share with you today is just a, a gift that you can access over um, on my website, on the blog for this episode. So it's a worksheet that you, you can use um, with your children. And I know it can be very, very helpful. So it's called the calming technique. And we, with that, we really help the child by taking them through um, helpful thinking is what, what we call it. So, you know, you may ask your child to write or draw a situation that has made them feel bad. And then they can, on the worksheet, they get to draw a face about how they feel about that situation. And then they, you can also get them to write um, what they thought about that situation as well. And I find that's just really, really helpful in helping them to understand that anxiety and then you know have the tools that they need to be able to to deal with that and you know them having a parent that understands it having a parent that's willing to do the work with them to really help them to understand it give them the tools that they need to be able to cope with that anxiety it's certainly going to help them as they grow through child to teenager into adulthood like I mentioned before both my girls suffer with anxiety from 
little ones to teenagers now into adulthood, but they have the tools and the strategies that they need to be able to help them cope with anxiety in their different times throughout their life. So I really hope that this episode has helped you to start to understand uh, anxiety and what to look for in your child so you can start to understand them on a deeper level and then help them, you know, and that empowers you and empowers them at the same time. So I really want to thank you for joining me and I look forward to chatting with you again next time.